So I received the um, kimono uh, lantern kits from Akibird Fruit Labs today. Um, so I figured uh, I'll try building one up um, and maybe talk a bit about the kit. Um, this is version two of a kit that was originally designed kind of after the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. So after the tsunami, obviously, there were issues with um, Fukushima uh, and uh, power, and there were lots of kind of uh, sporadic power cuts. Um, so this was designed as like a solar lantern project. Um, you know, people could build this this uh, solar lantern very cheaply and easily, and it would be kind of lighting, um, which they could have. And it's a very small kit. And the idea is that you'd kind of build it up and then you'd like mount it in the jam jar. So you'd mount the solar solar panel on the outside and make a little hole um, and then you could seal it in. Um, so if you look on the internet, you'll find version one of a kit was um, was quite complicated. Um, there are quite a few components in it, um, but this is version two and it just uses a single integrated circuit and the only um, uh, along with an inductor and then you know just the LEDs and the panel. Uh, so this is kind of a chip uh, out of the Chinese uh, ecosystem which is a complete uh, solar lamp controller. Um, so what it does is um, it'll, it'll charge the battery uh, from the solar panel but it also will drive the LEDs very efficiently um, and it has, I believe, a boost converter. And this, I assume that's what the inductor is for. Um, that lets it kind of overdrive the LEDs, um, but with pulse width uh, modulation. So you get um, higher efficiency, uh, basically. Um, which is kind of cool. And it's just this single um, device that does everything. Okay, so let's build it up. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is install the battery connector. Uh, so it just slides in. Um, and the positive is, is towards this end uh, where the switch sits. So let's solder that in. Um, and... Uh, I'm using leaded solder today. Uh, if I do anything that's kind of production-y, like if I have to give it someone else, um, I will use uh, unleaded um, because obviously it's not legal to use to sell things or give. I don't know about give things away, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, in Europe, uh, leaded solder is considered bad. Though it's a lot nicer to use. Um, so for the pins on the battery connector, I will use a pair of pliers. Um, I wouldn't use your normal wire cutters because you will wreck your wire cutters. Basically, you can use a pair of pliers or something with a nice hefty cutter in it, which you're not likely to damage. Uh, so that's the that's the battery connector in. Next, let's put the IC in. You have to be a bit careful here to get this in the right way around. So there's a flat edge, and then there's um, there's like a uh, an edge which is kind of grooved. So if I can find some kind of pen, yeah. So there is uh, a <clears throat> so that it looks like this. Okay, so it's one end is flat. You have to be careful because you'll see the marking on the board. Um, marking on the board looks kind of like this. Okay, and that's just the way it's done. But this is this end, right? So, um, so the way you want to install it on the board is let me get rid of these. Yeah. Is this way around with the battery? This is the battery. Okay, terrible drawing, right? <laughs> but <laughs> right, so you want it with the little notchy bits 
coming facing out towards you. The pins are spaced quite closely, so you have to be careful. Right, there we go. Let's get rid of this last bit of paper. Okay, so it's so it's facing towards you, and you could actually, if you look carefully, I doubt you'll be able to see under the camera, but you should be able to read the label on the front, so the label is facing out towards you. Um, so be a bit careful when you're soldering these in, uh, the the um, high C in, because the pins are quite close to each other. So you don't want to put too much solder on. You want to make make sure you're not uh, connecting any any of the pins together, bridging the pins. So just yeah, a little bit. Little, you know, obviously you want to make sure you've done it properly, but <laughs> just be a little bit careful. Okay. So that looks good to me. Nip, nip it off. There we go. Next, we're going to do the inductor, which is the thing looks like a resistor, a little bit like a resistor, but it's not a resistor. Um, the thing you'll note actually is there are no resistors on this board. Um, and uh, that's because. The, uh, I, I guess the controller itself is doing the effect is you know doing the controlling how much current goes through the LEDs with its pulse width fancy stuff itself. Okay, so that's that one in. Uh, what next? So I, I would suggest you do those two parts first because they're kind of going to be covered by the others. Uh, next we can do the switch I guess. For this I'm just going to hold it in and then kind of tack it in place just to so when I'm not you know if I was doing things properly I'd probably use like um, like I have a, a vice to hold PCBs in but partly because I know not everyone has vices um, I tend not to use them. You don't, you don't need them, um, but because of that, I tend to tack the, uh, some of the components in first and then solder them in. Um, just so I just tack them in, just to hold them in place, and then I will remake that tack with a proper joint uh, afterwards. It's always a bit difficult doing this under the camera actually because I keep forgetting you know I'm not looking at the camera so I keep moving out of shot I apologize okay that's that what do we do next well, we've got the LEDs and the little connector. Let's do the LEDs next. Um, LEDs again have to be a bit careful. So the markings on the board have this flat side, right? And most LEDs uh, have one end that is kind of flat. And these these do too, but it's it's a little bit hard to you can feel it, but there is um, like one side is flat. So it's probably easier to tell by the legs. Um, so the long leg is the negative side, and uh, that, that corresponds to the flat marking on the board. So just to make sure you do it that way. Right, and then again, I'm just gonna so when I tack things in, this is the way I do it. I don't know, it's probably not a proper way to do it. I just put a little blob of solder on the iron and then I just tack 
one of the pins down so I just touch it against the leg and I kind of get it so it kind of it sticks and that's good enough to keep the components in place uh, most of the time but it obviously is not a good joint so you will have to remake it okay and then when I'm soldering it I'll solder the the pin that I haven't tacked first so it stays so it doesn't fall out if you're looking for a good soldering tutorial I highly recommend the EEV blog tutorials if you just search that for that on YouTube you'll find all of his videos um, on soldering and he has great tool recommendations and um, like a basic guide on how to solder if this is not if this is like your first soldering uh, project okay the connector so the connector faces out the little notchy bit faces out okay so that's there there we go all working there's enough there's probably going to be enough charge in the battery just to get the lights to come on um, so that bit works the next thing we have to do is solder up the um, solar panel depending on how on what you're using this for you may want to actually put the cable through something before you solder it in um, but uh, for this I'm just going to solder it up so you can see so the first so the, the these cables come pre-tinned which is kind of nice um, but you'll need to tin the pads on the uh, solar panel just apply a little bit of solder and then I tend to put them this way around doesn't really matter but I heat up the pad and then just push in the connector and then heat them both up get it all to flow nicely and then hold it in place as it dries. And I'm still using 350 degrees for this. I use 350 degrees for all of all my soldering work with leaded solder, uh, unleaded solder. I tend to use a little bit, tiny little bit higher, maybe 360. There we go. And connect it up. It stops working. Now, the reason it stopped working is because um, it is also using the solar panel as a light sensor, which is pretty neat. So it doesn't need to have a separate like photodiode or something on there to to, te to detect the light. It just detects the power coming in from the. Uh, solar panel and if there's no power coming in it turns the leds on which is pretty cool so there we go um that's the kit it's kind of a, a cool kit for um yeah maybe making your own lights uh, in your garden or you know you could just have a, f a few of them they're so small it's a, for emergencies <laughs> but it's kind of cool i like it and i like this part as well i just think this 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 uh LED uh, lamp controller is just a, a really cool tiny part so yeah there we go um, you can buy I don't know if Freak Labs doesn't 
uh, I don't think he has him on his own shop yet, but you can certainly, um, you know, email us and um, we'll send them out and I'll be putting them on my uh, shop, which is uh, whitefordresearch.com. Thanks for watching.